So now we're ready to install our valley metal. So these will be panels going into the valley area. And what we're going to do is on one side, we'll show it all hidden and, and hemmed. And the other will show a visible fastener. So you can see right side by side what the two look like. Does that sound good? What's the first thing we need to do, yeah, Dave? That sounds great. The first thing that we're going to start with is the concealed fastener installation. Okay. And what we're doing is, like we have been elsewhere, we're going to use an offset cleat that's going to run up the valley and our panels are going to be cut on an angle. They're going to include a one inch clip and they're going to clip into that hem. So what we're going to do now is install the offset cleat the length of the valley. We're going to have it set back four inches so that we keep our reveal so that ice, snow and water can flow off the panel, hit the flat of the valley pen and exit the roof. All right. The amount that you leave here really depends on the geography, the type of weather. The more severe of a winter that you have, the greater the reveal that you're going to leave. All right. Okay, so That's we'll go, good. we'll install the offset cleat now, and then we'll come back and we can install our panels. Okay. So the offset cleat has been put in place. You can see it running the length of the valley, and you'll see that we have the four inch reveal all the way up. It's very important that the cleat be run parallel to the valley so that you keep the same angle as you go up the roof. You can see here that we've joined the cleat along the valley with the cleat along the eave so that we have a continuous cleat all the way up so that panels can clip into it. Beneath both cleats is tape seal to make for a watertight installation. I'm going to go ahead and install the cleat using pancake fasteners, making sure to thread the tape seal with the fastener. And when I'm done, we can start installing panel. So now the cleat is in. It's time to start measuring some panels, getting the angles cut, hemming them over so that we can put them in. Now, this can be tricky, but Dave knows how to get this done for us. However, unlike the hip area, there's no cap, there's nothing to cover or hide this angle. So we want to make sure you have everything you need to be able to make this cut accurately each time and get it to hug that line that we've got. So Dave's going to show us how that's done. That's right. As Jonathan explained, when you're running panels up and down a valley, it's very important to get the angle right because you don't have a hip cap to cover them if they're jogging at all. We're going to use the two foot square to calculate the angle for the valley panels. And you can see here that I've made a mark at 17. That 17 inches is calculated by measuring from the inside of the female rib to the outside of the male rib. And what I'm going to do now is place the square against the rib of the panel that we installed last. And I'm going to move it up until 17 intersects with the offset cleat. And that's how I can calculate the short side of my next panel. So I'm going to make a mark, transfer it here to the panel. And measuring from the top to this mark, I know what our short side is. Now in this case, we have a long side, which we already know because it's a full panel. We now have the short side because we'll measure from the top to this mark. And then we have one final measure, which is the distance from the rib to where the offset cleat at the eave intersects with the offset cleat at the valley. So what I'm going to do, we already know what the full length of the panel is because we have a full length installed here. And if I take that measurement, it's 40 and 7 eighths of an inch. I'm going to measure the short panel which I know because I've made a mark here, and that is 32 and a quarter. And the distance here along the eave is nine and a half. So we're gonna transfer those measurements onto the back of the panel, draw our lines, make our cuts, and bend the clips into them so that they can clip into the eave and clip into the valley along the offset cleat. So we've brought the panel to the table, we've turned it upside down, and we're gonna transfer the measurements that we just took off the roof onto the panel. Now keep in mind that you're working in reverse because you're working on the back side of the panel so that you have a flat surface to work on. If you were to try and work on the panel with it right side up, you'd have the ribs in the way and it would be very hard to get a straight edge uh, to sit down and join up lines. So if you look at this drawing, you can see this is the panel that we're needing to make. We have a 41 inch long side. We come across nine and a half inches and we come up to our angle to have a short side of 31 and a half. Both in the valley and alongside the eave, we have to make a one inch clip so that we can clip into the offset cleat. And we need to account for that when we're making our marks on the panel. Unlike the hip, 
where you take your measurements from the bottom of the panel, I'm taking my measurements for the valley as we go up the valley from the top. So my first measurement is going to be 41 inches and I need to add one inch for the clip, for the hem. So we come down, I'm going to make a mark at 42, which is the length of the panel. I'm going to make the next mark at 31 and a half plus one inch, which is 32 and a half. And I'm going to measure the width here, nine and a half inches, and I'm going to add one inch for a clip. So that's going to become 10 and a half inches. And I'll make another mark just down here so I can join them at 10 and a half. So now I have marks on the panel, and what I need to do is join all those marks using a straight edge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to join these two marks so that we have, we have a cut line. And I know that this line already includes a one inch clip. So I'm going to make a mark with my ruler, which I know is one inches thick, so that I know where I'm bending. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this panel. So I've just made a cut along the cut line, and this line here is our bend line. But because we have a rib here, we can't bend under the rib, so I'm going to take the rib off in line with the bend line. So I've made my marks on the back of the panel, I've made my cuts, and we can now bend the eave clip, and we can bend the valley clip, and I've removed the rib. So I'm going to go ahead and make those bends now so that we can go and install the panel. So we transferred the measurements to the back of the panel on the table. We added one inch for a hem so that we could clip into the offset cleat along the eave and in the valley. And we have our finished panel here so you can see that we come along for nine and a half inches on the bottom and then we have our angle for the valley. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this by clipping the hem into the offset cleat. So the panel's in place. We're going to clip it into the offset cleat. You can see it's hanging down here. We're going to push it up so that it engages the offset cleat in both the valley and at the eave. There we go. We've pushed it up. And I'm going to lock it into place. And we have a perfect angle that comes down the valley and across the eave. And we're in line with our adjacent panel. So we're going to go ahead and we'll put fasteners in the nailing strip and then we'll measure for our next panel. Now that we've installed a panel that is both in the eave and in the valley, we're going to take our measurements for the next full valley panel, again using our two foot square that we've marked at 17 inches because that's the inside to the outside of the SL16 panel. We have our square that's been marked at 17 inches. We've placed it against the inside of the rib of the last panel and we have it in place until 17 intersects with the offset cleat. And I'm going to make a mark here on the panel, and that's going to allow us to measure for the short side of the next panel. So the first measurement that I'm going to take is the long side. I'm taking it from the top of the previous panel all the way down to the cleat, and I'm measuring along the inside of the male rib. And that measurement is 33 and one quarter. And the short side measurement, which is from the top of the panel to the line that I made based on our two foot square, is 13 and seven eighths. So we'll take those measurements, transfer them to the panel, put our hem in it for the cleat, come back and install it. What I'm doing now is I'm transferring the measurements that we just took off the roof onto the back of the panel. We have a long side of 33 and a quarter, a short side of 13 and 7 eighths, and we have to add one inch for our clips into the offset cleat. And I'm measuring from the top. So my first mark is going to be at 33 and a quarter. My next mark is at 13 and 7 eighths. So using the square, I'm going to transfer this line across the panel, lining up the square with the factory edge of the nailing strip. And I now know that I need to join my long side with my short side and then account for the one inch clip. And this is what I mean by inside of rib 
to outside of rib. And that's why we're using the 17 inch measurement instead of 17 and a half. Now I'll cut along this line, bend the clip, and we can install this panel. So we've prepared our full panel for the valley. You can see the angle that's been cut into it, short side and long side. And if I turn it over, we have the clip that's gonna go into the offset cleat. So we'll go ahead and install it. We're gonna slide it into the offset cleat. We're sliding up. We clip the panel in place and we have a perfect angle following the offset cleat. So I've just installed the last panel in the valley. You can see that we have a really nice line running up with our four inches of reveal so snow, ice and water can flow down easily. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a wooden block and a hammer to push these panels down so that they sit really nice and tight to the valley. You have a very clean look and you have less chance of water weeping underneath the panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can use a block, you can wrap it in a towel if you like, and you, the key is to do it gradually and not too hard all at one time so you don't dimple the panel. So on the left side, we have the SL16 panel installed using an offset cleat and a hemmed edge which makes for a concealed fastener installation. On the right side, we're going to install the SL16 using exposed fasteners. The measuring technique is the exact same. So I'm going to go cut those panels, install them, so that you can see the difference between exposed fastener and concealed fastener. Now we have valley panel installed on both sides of the valley. And as I told you before, on the left side, we did a concealed fastener installation. And on the right side, we used exposed fasteners. Now let's move on with our project. 